Hey everyone, and welcome to Easter Monday at GazWorthies.com. Uh, for the last few days, I've been getting a few uh, people in the comment box to GazWorthies asking if we could have a look at uh, the historic and very severe snow event that occurred at the end of April uh, 1908. Do a historic video for it. And as you know, I like to uh, give my viewers and uh, followers uh, what they want. So, yeah, we're going to have a look at the uh, state event of April 1908. Um, in today's historic video, it's right at the end of the month, almost on a par or on a par uh, with what happened in 1981. At the end of April, there was another snowstorm, 1981. I've already done the video about that, uh, and you can find it on my historic page. So, yeah, we're going to have a look at the uh, start event of uh, April 1908 in a moment. But before I do it, oh, in fact, I just want to mention the advertising. There's video ads on my pages at catsmobits.com. If you press play on the video ads, you'll be sporting catsmobits.com. Thanks so much for doing that. Also, got the content ads, which are links to articles. So if there's any article that you're interested in, interested in, there's some very interesting articles in there. I've had a browse through for myself. There are some really interesting articles. Just click through the links, and you have, you'll be able to go off and read the article at the same time. Uh, Gaps where this good royalty fee on what you're doing. And um, these things help pay for the website, so thanks so much for getting involved and supporting gaswebbies.com. Now, just to say, this could be quite a long video, and I've got a bit of a sore mouth still. A week ago today, I had a very minor uh, operation on my uh, mouth. It's a lot better than it was, of course, but it's only a week, uh, a week ago. So I've still got a bit of a sore mouth, and because it's going to be quite a long video, uh, some words may get a little bit jumbled up, but I hope you had to follow uh, what I uh, want to uh, get across. And uh, in terms of the video, uh, it wouldn't be possible without two uh, huge uh, websites that to really help with these videos. I couldn't do uh, the historic videos without these two websites. Of course, it's the historic archive at wettercentral.d. Um, they've got the archive going all the way back uh, to January the 1st, 1871. And it wouldn't be possible to do the historic videos uh, without the chart. So thanks so much for them. Uh, and their historic archive, and also a lot of information in all my historic videos, but particularly in this one, because it's so long ago, and I don't know a great deal about it myself, to be honest, uh, a lot of the information that you're going to hear in this video comes from the personal web website of the, one, of the wonderful uh, Professor Trevor Harley, and again, I couldn't do any of these historic videos, really, uh, without the information I uh, gather from Trevor Harley's personal web website. You can find a link to both wetsetra.d and Trevor Harley's personal web website on my links page. Do check out those uh, fantastic resources of information. You can away many a uh, bank holiday Monday at both the uh, Historic Archive at Wetter Central and at Trevor Harley's personal web website as well. Thanks so much to both of those websites. As I said, couldn't do any of these, these historic videos uh, without them. So let's get on with the uh, historic video for April uh, 1908. We're going to start on the 1st of April 1908, just to put things in context. And here we are on the 1st. Uh, we've got high pressure sitting down to the southwest, low pressure to the northeast. Bringing on in a flat west to northwest. But it's quite a cold month, actually. That's not a particularly cold start to the month, but it was a cold month. Uh, a very cold, really, with central England temperature of just 6.0. And that's just uh, 0.6 degrees uh, warmer than the coldest April on record, which occurs in uh, 1917 at 5.4. Uh, 1917, April 1917 was the coldest April on record. Uh, but this one, not far from it, at just 6.0, a uh, very, very cold month. You're going to see uh, why as we go through uh, the chart. So let's go on and have a look at the 5th of April 1908. And we've got low pressure then uh, sitting just to the southeast of the country, high pressure reaching out to the northwest. This is Pretty cold, really cold air coming around with slow pressure, uh, no doubt bringing some wintry showers and some quite hard uh, night frost. As you go out towards the 10th of April, the high pressure is ridging in across the country again. The low pressure is down to the south and the east through the continent. Uh, it's not as high as there, but it's not really in a position to generate mild uh, weather. All the mild air is around this area, these areas of low pressure up here to the northwest of the country. We're firmly locked into uh, a cold sort of scenario then. We go through to the middle of that April 1908. High pressure is built over Scandinavia and bringing a proper easterly wind. That's a cold wind as well. Uh, by the middle of April, you Usually it's warming <coughs> excuse me, normally it's warming up <coughs> over the continent, but this is a cold easterly wind uh, coming in, particularly for England and Wales, 
and again would no doubt be bringing night frost uh, and the risk of wintry showers uh, to uh, northern parts of the country in particular. Now, as we get through towards the 17th of April 1908, we're showing signs of retrogression of the high pressure. So we're taking the high pressure, if we go back, there's a high pressure centred over Scandinavia on the 15th. By the 17th, we're taking it out uh, towards Scotland and then on uh, to the south of Iceland. Retrogression is when pressure goes from east to west as opposed to the normal flow, which is west to east. And when you get retrogression, it's normally a sign that something quite significant is about to happen in the atmosphere. And indeed, that is what does happen as we get through towards the 18th we take high pressure properly out towards Iceland and Greenland set up a real blocking feature there uh, ice bars coming round that high pressure coming in from the northeast so very cold northeasterly winds starting to feed down across the country Easter was late uh, was late in 1908 and actually uh, Easter Sunday is uh, the 19th this day uh, 19th of April uh, 1908 with a proper blocking area of high pressure at 1030 millibars over uh, Greenland centred over Greenland and bring down this cold northeasterly flow and that brought a lot of uh, wintry showers snow showers uh, to many parts of the country there was over 7 uh, centimetres for instance at Bury St Edmunds uh, <coughs> on uh, Easter Sunday uh, yeah, really cold northeasterly wind feeding in across the country. Hail showers are uh, common, common as well. As we get through to the 20th of April, which is uh, Easter Monday this year, yep, yeah, we've got the uh, low pressure to the east and the southeast country, the high pressure out to the northwest. Properly north to northeasterly flow coming down across the country. Really cold air uh, for the time of year. Here's the upper air temperatures of a minus five ice firm. Which is sort of a minimum requirement in the middle of winter for snow, uh, but it's uh, the minus five ice firm is uh, probably not the minimum requirement in April. You probably need to get to around minus seven or minus eight, uh, really, as the minimum uh, requirement in terms of the upper air temperatures uh, in the mid to the last part of April. But nevertheless, it's well south of the country, minus five ice firm, so we've been proper cold, uh, sort of bitterly cold, Arctic air feeding in across the country. So a very cold Easter in 1908. Things do then moderate a little bit uh, for a day or two. This is the 22nd of uh, April 1908 and uh, we're sort of pulling winds back in more from the west to northwesterly flow now. We've lost that north uh, to northeasterly. So things slightly less cold. There's a four of uh, snow going on and we're uh, sort of bringing in slightly moderated uh, less cold air but it is still quite unsettled. Now things start to get really interesting as we go through to the 23rd and this is really where things begin. There is snow on the 23rd because we've still got cold air trying to feed down uh, from the northeast. Um, we've got warmer air trying to come up from the southwest. So if I just highlight what's going on here, uh, we've got this high pressure centred uh, around Greenland of course and we bring down cold air uh, around that area of high pressure, cold air feeding down uh, like that but we've also got warm air trying to push up uh, from the south of course because it's late in the uh, year it's uh, coming towards the end of April so warm air is trying to feed up from the south and in between we've got a waving uh, weather front uh, sort of waving about uh, like this ripples running along that weather front and when that weather front pushes into that cold air of course you know what's going to happen on the northern edge uh, we're hitting the cold air and we are bringing uh, the risk of snow. So there was some snow around on the 23rd of April from that weather front. Not massive amounts, but just a hint of what's going to happen. Now, as we go through towards the 24th of April, uh, 1908, uh, <coughs> where we start actually quite a nice day uh, with quite a bit of sunshine around across the country, but the battleground uh, sort of scenario is still going on here. Uh, we've still got a weather front sort of trailing about. We start off on a bright note, uh, but the next sort of ripple runs up from the south through the course of the 24, bringing more snow back into the south of the country through the course of the day. This is the uh, sort of important area uh, just here. We've got a developing area of low pressure around here. Uh, it's going to bring that uh, low that weather front back northwards, uh, coming into that cold air, of course, coming down from the north. And this is how the blizzard really gets going uh, through the latter part of the 24th of April 1908 and into the 25th. And it is a tremendous uh, sort of historic uh, blizzard. The snow 
On the 24th, into the 25th, uh, gets as far north as uh, uh, Staffordshire. Uh, we find uh, quite widely uh, across Hampshire, Berkshire, uh, 69, 70 centimetres of snow being recorded. Southampton uh, in this period, 24th, 25th of April, has 35 centimetres of snow. Tremendous amounts of snow uh, falling across the country. The Channel Islands, uh, right down in the far south, almost uh, towards the north of France, uh, gets over a foot of snow uh, and we're talking about the end of April here late April quite remarkable really uh, that that could happen so let's go through to the actual uh, upper air temperatures and we see that uh, yeah we have got the minus five ice firm still there strung out across the country uh, it's pushed back a little bit further north uh, but it's there through Wales the Midlands in towards northern England hoping to make that out there's the warm air across France trying to push northwards and in between we've got that very active where we're from. As we go through towards the 25th of April, and this is really uh, the day that we have the blizzard rage, and it goes on all day across most of England and Wales. Again, we've got this low pressure uh, just here, uh, and a weather front is strung out there across the country. That low pressure is running through that weather front. Uh, very active weather front with the warm air again trying to push up from the south, uh, the cold air feeding in uh, that low pressure from the north. So that's what produces this tremendous snow event through the 25th of April. Blizzards raging all day, really, particularly for southern and uh, southeastern parts of the country. As I say, we've got up to uh, 60, 70 centimetres of snow quite widely uh, across uh, parts of Berkshire. Uh, Hampshire as well, uh, getting very badly hit uh, with uh, with the snow uh, through this period, the 25th of April. We've got to 40 centimetres of snow at Oxford, uh, and I don't in Oxford, and I don't think that's actually been beaten since. Certainly, Trevor Harley say that the 40 centimetres of snow uh, recorded with this event uh, ha was the heaviest fall of snow since February 1888 up to that point, and has not been exceeded in any month uh, since. Hard to believe that, but we won't exceed it in 1947. But uh, nevertheless, that's what Trevor says, and he is the font of all knowledge on these things. Now, further north, we're not getting the snow, but we are getting some tremendously cold weather uh, going on with this event. So, uh, for Scotland, it's really frost that we're talking about. We're getting some very, very uh, severe frost with temperatures as low as minus 12 in Edinburgh on the night of the 24th and the 25th. Uh, Garth, Garforth in Yorkshire uh, gets down to minus 12.8. Uh, These are incredibly low temperatures uh, for this late in the year. They haven't been exceeded, haven't exceeded uh, minus 10 this late in the year since this spell. So either April 1908, uh, 1981 I should say, uh, was not as cold or as severe as uh, this particular spell. So that blizzard rages all day across England and Wales on the 25th. Tremendous amounts of snowfall uh, falling with that blizzard. Uh, there's the uh, prayer temperature showing that the cold minus 5 ice firm has pushed southwards. And you notice we're not much below uh, minus 5 at 850 HPA there uh, in terms of the upper air temperature. So it does suggest that uh, I said that really you need to get down to minus 7, minus 8 at 850 HPA this late in the year uh, to get snow. It's not quite right really. In these sort of scenarios uh, where we've got uh, tremendous uh, sort of uh, precipitation rates which are producing lots of evaporative cooling as they're running as rain or precipitation runs through the atmosphere it really cools the atmosphere down and uh, yeah we're almost in a, on a par uh, with uh, say the middle of winter in terms of getting snow uh, from the minus five isotherm so it just goes to show you even in late April uh, you don't need to be that far uh, from a minus five isotherm uh, you don't need to be uh, that, that uh, much uh, beyond minus five at 850 HPA uh, to get snow, uh, but it's very rare, of course. These events, uh, snow events at the end of April, uh, very, very rare. The next time it happened was actually in 1981 uh, to this extent, so a long, long time uh, would have to go before it happened again.
Now, as you go through to the 26th of April, 1908, that low pressure uh, that's been producing the snow with its weather front is uh, moving off to the east. There it is, off the coast of East Anglia. It's going off that way. And then we're starting to push in uh, this somewhat uh, milder or less cold sort of Atlantic air. So what's going to happen now is that very rapidly, all of this snow, uh, 30, 40, 50, 60 uh, centimetres of it, is going to fall out, is going to thaw out uh, very, very quickly. Uh, so as we go towards the end of the month, uh, yeah, we're going to lose the blow, we're going to lose the cold air, uh, the blocking is starting to recede back up towards green. The mist trough of low pressure is starting to push milder air up from the southwest. Here comes that model rare with those upper air temperatures. The young curves moving in. To get through to the 30th, where well, we're in a proper sort of mild flow there. You wouldn't know anything had happened just a few days ago. The uh, Atlantic air is pushing in, rapidly falling away uh, all of that snow. And there was, I'm sure you can imagine, after all that snow uh, fell and uh, then falls very quickly, there was a tremendous amount of pretty severe flooding as we get through to the end of the month. Uh, but that was really quite a remarkable star event. And let's just have a look at a few pictures uh, to put it in context. So we're going to first of all have a look at the Isle of Wight. This is uh, how it looked on the Isle of Wight on the 25th of April uh, 1908. Heavy snow falling there and a good covering. Uh, and it even got a, a lot deeper, a, a lot deeper. Than that. This is Oxford, uh, St Giles in Oxford, and yeah, really good covering of snow. This is the 26th of April, so after the snow has uh, gone through, uh, that's how much cover there was in the middle of Oxford. As we go through uh, to the final picture that I'm going to show, this is Southampton. Uh, very, very deep snow there uh, in Southampton uh, in 1908. Some uh, really deep cover there uh, indeed uh, in uh, the middle of, South of Southampton. Right, of course, right on the uh, south coast. So uh, you can see from that wall just how much <laughs> snow there is. That went very, very quickly. Uh, and there's rapid, uh, rapid fall, and a lot of flooding has got through to the end of the month. Um, so that's it. Hope you found the video uh, interesting. That was the start date of April 1908. As I say, I don't know, didn't know a great deal about this event, but uh, I've gleaned all of the information that you've heard in this video from uh, the wonderful Trevor Harley. So do go out, uh, do go off uh, after you've seen this video and check his personal uh, weather website hope you found the video interesting uh we're certainly not having anything like that uh this year i say very very unusual to get that depth of cold and snow at the end of april uh from 1908 we'd have to go right way through to 1981 uh before we got it uh right back again it wasn't quite as severe as that i don't think uh, quite as extensive or as cold uh, as uh, as that in uh, 1981 but it was sort of a similar scenario, it came from a similar uh, type of event. I've already done the video about it, you can find it on the historic page. Um, so, yeah, we'd have to go a very long time uh, before we'd have conditions like that again. I'm sure it'll occur at some point, it may be within our lifetimes, or it may not be. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. It will almost certainly happen again at some point, but there'll be a star event on par with that at the end of April. Um, maybe it'll be next year. Maybe it'll be in 50 years' time. Who knows? The weather is constantly surprising us and uh, baffling us. That's it for now. Hope you found the video interesting. Uh, enjoy what's left of your uh, Easter Monday. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.